Hidden within the field of astrobiology is a nagging question, and it comes with a deep-seated fear because the nature of the answer to the question is unknown. But the effect of what that nature is could be inherently dangerous for life on Earth, including humans. And it's something we may accidentally bring about. The question involves chirality. Essentially, some of the chemistry of life involves chirality in molecules. Chirality itself is just when an object is not identical to its mirror image. You can see this easily with a pair of human hands. They are chiral, meaning that even though they are mirror images of each other, they cannot be superposed, not superimposed, wrong word, onto each other. Molecules, some of them, are this way. They have paired mirror images of each other, but like hands, are either left or right-handed. Chirality is involved with biochemistry in that all life on Earth uses amino acids that are left-handed and sugars that are right-handed. It doesn't have to be that way. The opposite mirror images could, in principle, work just the same for life. No one knows why Earth life is this way. It simply is, for lack of a better understanding of the reasons why. But it also appears to be possible to flip it around and create functional mirror life. And the question within astrobiology is, does the universe do this? And just through some unknown process, a planet ends up with only one type. This could be due to any number of reasons. It may be that both chiralities arise in abiogenesis. But somehow one type wins over the other, perhaps in habitat competition or something along those lines. But no one knows. All we know is that Earth has no life we know of that is of the opposite chirality, but there may be a different chemical reason for it, more on that in a bit. But Earth may not be this way forever, or in fact not much longer, and this is where this gets spooky. One glaring benefit to researching chiral molecules in relation to biology is the huge potential for pharmaceutical development, which is already being done. It's enormous and that's certainly beneficial in coming up with new treatments for diseases, and should absolutely be pursued. There's no inherent danger in doing so. But in some quarters, there is an idea to go further and create a form of synthetic life with the opposite chirality to life on Earth. That goes much further than an inanimate molecule for a drug. The molecules themselves aren't the problem. That's just chemistry as we know it. It's life itself that is the issue with chiral molecules. In December of last year, a very diverse group of top scientists that included Nobel laureates and people in the field of synthetic life issued a warning that the development of mirror life could cause irreversible harm to human health and the world's ecosystems if it were to escape. One huge problem here is that mirror bacteria could get past biological immune systems without even being noticed by them to potentially deadly and spreading results. Moreover, recent work showed that mirror life bacteria would be immune to our antibiotics. Add that together and we simply would have no defense against this type of infectious disease. There was pushback to this in the scientific community, however, that downplayed the concerns. Most saying it's putting the cart before the horse. But the end point of the concerns was that mirror bacteria should not be created unless there is overwhelming evidence for its safety. Right now, that's not entirely clear. And there is, of course, the ever-present question of whether synthetic life of opposite chirality can be weaponized. Normal synthetic life certainly can. Mirror life may be much worse. But some said the concerns were premature and that we're nowhere close to being able to create a mere organism. That's true. It's years away and not an immediate concern. But the question is, how far can an accidental release of mirror bacteria go? Well, it's an unlikely scenario that would probably need at least several millennia to play out unchecked, but in principle, it does hold the potential for the extinction of much, if not all, megafauna on this planet including ourselves. But much more probable is severe irreparable damage to life on Earth in general, if not extinction. Some have also said that a right-handed glove cannot fit the left hand, and it's unclear how far that incompatibility goes with chirality. But there is commonality in that both types of handedness eat the same basic elements from the periodic table. Elements are elements and are not chiral. 
nor are all molecules life consumes. The bottom line here is that while it's currently thought that the risk of mirror life is low, the potential consequences are extremely dangerous and not yet understood. Also worth noting that in the past, science has said there would be no risks to things like creating huge amounts of plastic, when in fact, we just didn't know what would happen with plastics and we'd end up with an ocean full of it all fragmenting around. While fully synthetic life of either chirality is years away, at least a decade, there has been some work on parts of it. We've been able to synthesize viruses since 2002, but viruses are very specific things, unlike bacteria which aren't as specific. And viruses do not pose much of a threat unless there is an evolutionary path towards extreme generalization, such as a slowly dying planet where they might evolve to infect anything they can. Viruses evolve to infect specific organisms and are not generalists to any high degree, other than sometimes jumping species as to whatever else they can infect, see bird flu, swine flu, and so on. For microbes, we have made partially synthetic bacteria for about 15 years now, but it's still our chirality and still based on existing organisms. That's a topic in itself streamlining genomes by paring down the useless, as far as we know, DNA. In 2013 came the synthetic ribosome. We also have created some mirror proteins, but an entire organism is still in the future, and constructing one of opposite chirality even further in the future, at least a decade if not significantly longer. The concern, however, is that immune systems work by recognizing specific molecular shapes in invading bacteria to very much simplify it. In the case of mirror life, those shapes are reversed, presumably impairing the abilities of the immune system to go after them. But there are limits. Bacteria and mirror bacteria can have narrow host ranges and limited ecosystems. They are not invincible. But the potential for harm is still there nonetheless. But more broad species of bacteria might be able to jump ecosystems, and what starts as an infected human coming into contact with and infecting a rabbit out in the yard, say you sneeze on the lawn rabbit, and that rabbit spreads it to the plants, in that case it's difficult to even detect bacteria once in a living plant. And then there is the ever-present question of the mutation of escaped mirror life. Can evolution make it better very rapidly? But there is a saving grace here, potentially, in that, once again, Earth life has only one chirality, and that might be due to simply that there is some property of the opposite chirality that is a showstopper for mirror life. There is a clue here. Recent research suggests that cell membranes may favor one chirality over another. The membranes are made of fatty chiral molecules, and the researchers found that certain configurations of the molecules resulted in membranes that were more permeable to Earth's chirality than the opposite. Essentially, the opposite chirality gets filtered out by this effect, potentially both explaining how things got this way on Earth, and also creating a showstopper for at least natural mirror life, or at least a serious limiting stumbling block, which may give Earth's chirality an advantage. And there is more. In mirror molecules, at least the relevant ones here, there actually is a tiny tweak, a natural alteration that occurs in weak interactions chemically, which also seems to favor our brand of chirality over the other, but it's hard to see how this tiny effect would be a showstopper. Rather, it may not affect anything. But sometimes what initially appear to be tiny effects end up being much more important the more we find out. But if it turns out that mirror life is just as possible as our brand of life, equal on both sides, and that there is some kind of great filter that makes it one or the other for an exoplanet, then that has huge implications on life in the universe. For one, if we ever saw a life form on another solar system object, say Mars or Europa, and it was mirror life, then that would be an instant and sure way to tell that it is not related to us and actually represents a true second abiogenesis of life. Instantly, the question of whether there is other alien life in the universe is solved, if not an answer to why we have not seen evidence of other civilizations out there in the cosmos. The question, therefore, is would such mirror life be dangerous to encounter that came from a completely alien source? 
this is unlikely. First is the problem of not only being a completely separate form of life with no relation at all, but it also evolved on a different planet with completely different circumstances of evolution and habitat. And while bacteria are a problem in this regard, anything bigger isn't. If, for example, you created a mirror giraffe, the giraffe would not last long on Earth. And yes, it could bite you, but not in a way different from a regular giraffe. This is because animals need to feed on their own chirality. The giraffe would need mirror plants to eat. If you had that, you'd be good on the pet giraffe. But oddly, you would also possibly have the healthiest giraffe that's ever lived, and here's why. Back to the viruses and how specific they are. Viruses on Earth simply have no way to infect the opposite chirality. Even mirror viruses would be harmless to us because they can't deal with mirror chemistry either. As a result, your giraffe would never catch a cold. And if someone made a mirror cold virus, you couldn't catch it. But it's very different on the microbial level and here is an apocalyptic scenario. One of the last things we would want to create are mirror cyanobacteria. This probably should never be attempted. Cyanobacteria only need achiral nutrients. That's nutrients that both flavors can use, along with light, which is neutral as well, obviously. It's just light. But such mirror cyanobacteria would also have no natural predators eating it, meaning that it could and probably would very rapidly destroy the bottom of the food chain on Earth by crowding out the normal cyanobacteria because of that advantage. This is bad for the basis of eating for our flavor of life on Earth at its most basic. Destroying the base of the food chain is very bad. It would, like the mirror giraffe, leave us with nothing we could eat. Even if opposite chiral life was blossoming across Earth in a kind of reset of the earliest stages of evolutionary history on Earth, it would be a feast unfolding before life on Earth amid a famine. And if that mirror life were artificial, it could be that it slowly replaces the indigenous life on a planet and supplants it entirely. Perhaps a cycle could develop where the extinction of one form of chiral life is replaced with the other over time, but then becomes vulnerable itself and eventually gets replaced. Very speculative stuff, but spooky nonetheless. Thanks for listening. I'm futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently stocking up on Lysol. Mirror Life isn't strong enough to get past that brick wall. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.